Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And you know what time it is? It's that time. This is where the fun begins. Time to bust some narratives. And yep. <laughs> drop some truth bombs. Drop some truth bombs. We're going to talk about Shira. We're going to talk about women in animation. And we're going to talk about all the weirdness going on now that the show is over that people seem to be doubling down on lies. Well, they, it was weird before, but it's gotten really weird lately. Yeah, so we're going to try to go through the uh, the ballad of DreamWorks, Shira, and uh, just uh, correct a few things that are that are floating around well, out there. It seems like these people are suddenly coming out of the woodwork and they all have the exact same talking points. I don't know where they're getting their information, but a lot of it's incorrect. And they keep pushing these talking points and it's like, but that's not true, though. And the next person says the same thing, but that's still not true. Just because just you repeat something over and over and over again, if it's not true, it doesn't make it true. Yeah, um, and I don't know where it's coming from. I, I you know, I, I've speculated when this whole thing started like two years ago that there was a, a PR firm behind. I th it does seem like that. this, and I think that they are pushing talking points for the show because they were trying to, um, you know, right out of the gate, and that's what we're going to start with. Right out of the gate, the narrative was that Shira, the original Shira, was created by men. And she's problematic and it needed changed. Created by men, she was problematic, she needed change. And, uh, you know, she was redesigned by Noel Stevenson and company to keep men from fapping to her. Like, I, I can't believe, I can't even fathom a more disgusting mm -hmm. narrative. And this is not true. And we're going to talk about the women in the animation, but just to start with, who actually was behind Shira? If you watch, and this is out there, everybody's known this. Anybody that's actually been a fan of of uh, He Man and Shira for any amount of time know that there were women well, involved. Let's start with that. Well, before we get there, let's start with what the lies are, and then we'll debunk them one by okay. one. Like, well, this we'll tie into this one. One, it was just done by men, um, and it was made only to sell toys. Right. Um, that was the, that's the one they keep pushing. They only made to sell toys. Well, you know, at least their toys sold. That's all I'm going to say, because Mattel tried to put out new dolls and no one wanted them. So, you know, but back then, yes, toy companies financed um, shows and the shows sold the toys and they had to make their money stand in the air. But there was a lot of shows that even up until recent times were based on toy lines. Yeah, even Pokemon. If the video games didn't sell, mm -hmm. if the toys didn't sell, there would be no Pokemon. Right. You know, Yu-Gi-Oh! I mean, it goes the list goes on and on and on. Right, this is not a new thing. But it was that the main focus, no, because they actually brought in a film company. Yes. Uh, you know, they brought them in and they, they, they had to come up with stories and they had to make characters. They had to make, you know, personalities. They have stories to go with it. And then they worked with with Mattel on what the toys would be. Um, the other lie is that she was, you know, they just did that to try to get girls to watch him to go watch the show. And that's not true. Most girls watch Team man And they even said that in the, in the documentary. Yeah. Um, which is called, what is it called? The documentary? See the, the Power of Grayskull? Yeah, this is so weird because this... Like a lot of He Man and Shira fans have known the story about how uh, He Man and Shira came about mm -hmm. and who was involved in the creation of He Man and Shira. But now there's literally no excuse to be ignorant mm -hmm. because Netflix, before they dropped the new Shira show, put this documentary out there that basically bullet points the entire creation story of Shira and He Man and right. where they came from and who was involved and shows that there were a lot of women involved in the creation of Shira from women, the get-go. Women were showrunners on He-Man yes. from the get-go. So this narrative that women just now have become uh, allowed to run shows. And thank God people like Noel Stevenson are here to be showrunners because it's always been a men before. is not true. And that is provable in many, many, many different licenses, not just Shira. So that's one narrative that's a load of shit that we're just blowing out of the water. That is untrue. Stop saying it because it's not true. So here we have the former marketing director of Mattel. Uh, she was responsible for overseeing Shira. We have Erica Scheimer, who came up with the storyline or helped come up with storylines at Filmation. Woman. We're going to talk about uh, Larry Dottilio. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a whole nother fiasco. Um, we have the uh, design of Shira was Justine Dancer, mm -hmm. who she designed Shira. So the Shira that everybody's like, it was designed by men. It wasn't. To fap to is a disgusting lie. And, and then the other part of it is, you know, they're also skinny and pretty. Okay, here's the thing too. The toys, um, the ones that you say that show was just made to sell because they were first. Um, they were designed by these women and they had to fight. 
Yes. To get if you watch the documentary and actually do some research, they had to fight to get them to look the way they did because the powers that be wanted them to be model pretty and super skinny, and the women behind the toy line didn't. They wanted them to be thicker. They wanted them. That's why she was kind of like more buff. Yep. And they wanted her to be thicker and chunkier and not have a model like. Oh, look how super pretty her face is. That was their point. They made. They didn't want her to look like Barbie, and they didn't want her to be a model. And they had. They had to fight for that choice, and they won. So women were out there fighting for, you know, better depictions of women back then. So this load of shit that, you know, because we slapped pants on and made them fatter means that they're, you know, they're suddenly, you know, more for women is, is not true. Yeah, this this was one of the first lies. I mean, beyond the fact that Shira was designed by men for, for men to fap to, mm -hmm. A disgusting lie. Oh, it's okay if you're a woman and you flick the bean to Shira, well, as long okay. as you're, you know, you, 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 that's okay. Don't you know? That's that's what gets me. It makes me so mad. They keep spreading this narrative, this lie narrative, and then they turn around and make all these pictures, and you go out there and search for art, and there's all this art that's very questionable. Mm -hmm. And but that's okay um, because it's them doing it. Uh, but Shira was, uh, you know, they, they talked about how she was remodeled to promote inclusivity, diversity, and uh, of course they wanted thicker characters because again, Shira, everybody, and that was a complaint. And that was even the, the production team on the new show is like, well, they were all skinny and white. And I'm like, they weren't all white. They weren't all white and they had to fight for that. I mean, look, this bullshit narrative about DreamWorks Shira that keeps going around uh, denigrates so many women so many gay people who worked on the original show mm -hmm. there. And this is the problem we have. Everybody keeps making this out like, you know, Clownfish TV hates on Shira because it's gay. That could not be. Don't further, even really care. Could not be further from the truth. That's not the problem. The problem is right out the gate before the infamous kiss. This production has been troubled because they have been doing nothing but throwing shade and lying about the original show. Right, and here's the thing too. Had they not gone after original fans the way they had, yeah. they would not have had half the backlash they got. Because when you're out there telling fans when they're like, wait, I don't really like the designs, she doesn't look like She-Ra. Because frankly, the new design does not look like She-Ra. I'm no. sorry. Does not look like the original She-Ra. Um, you know, if there was like, you could probably have met in the middle somewhere and it would have worked out better. People didn't like it because like, wait, that doesn't look like She-Ra. And immediately it was because the narrative started. It's because, well, you just can't fap to her. Well, you're still flicking the bean to her, so I don't want to hear it. You know, you just want designed the way you want. And you know why they made the characters heavier, honestly? Because uh, there's a lot of heavier set women, me included, who feel like they aren't represented. So they made yeah. them that. But you know why? Because then they can have more, more cosplay options available. I guarantee you that's why. I guarantee you, because there's Rose Quartz hit Steven Universe, who yeah. was done first, by the way, um, and she was heavier. Every other fat girl under the sun was cosplaying as Rose Quartz. So I guarantee you that having the chunkier characters, a big part of it was because, well, then more, more cosplay options. They're not going to say that, of course, and I'm going to be telling <laughs> full of crap, but I go to a lot of conventions. I know a lot of people in Hollywood. I know a lot of people who run conventions, and they're saying the same things. So uh, Yeah. Uh, Barbara Hamley, another writer who worked on Sheer. There were so many women. Uh, involved in the creation of Shira, both on Mattel's side mm -hmm. and on the Filmation side. Yes, and Filmation was brought in to give it a story. Right, and they did that with He-Man. Originally, Mattel had, and we're going to talk about that because there's a lot of lies going on about, you know, uh, from comic book resources, you know, these people get paid five bucks an article, uh, so I don't know what the hell they're talking about. But He-Man was basically Conan the Barbarian, mm -hmm. unlicensed Conan the Barbarian. He didn't really have a storyline. Filmation came in and gave He-Man the whole backstory. Yes. And all of that you can thank Filmation for, all that people were like, oh my God, Filmation's so cheap and they were awful and they were horrible, just toy, commercial, whatever. They actually gave He-Man and She-Ra their identities, their story. Any coding you read into that is because of Filmation. Yeah, and here's the thing, uh, over over there too, uh, they had a lot of people, a very diverse group working over yes. there. Diversity wasn't invented just now. But this whole idea that you're hearing, well, they made She-Ra because they wanted to, show to, they wanted to sell toys to girls. She-Ra actually was made as a spinoff because they had a whole lot of girls watching He-Man. Yep. I used to watch He-Man well before she was even a thing. Yeah, uh, they, they actually talk about that again in this documentary. Very easy to find. They talk about how she was spun off from He-Man because of Tila being so popular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to watch He-Man all the time with my, my, my cousins, my brother. We used to watch it. And then and then when she came out, they'd run them back to back. So you'd watch both anyway. So this whole idea that, you know, well, I was one of the few girls who watched He-Man first. Most girls watched He-Man first, but that would require you to have been there. And a lot of you want to throw shade weren't even there. Yeah, in fact, the original the original version of uh, I forgot about this. The original version of Tila or of uh, Shira was actually Leela 
which is Tila's sister. She was mm-hmm. so popular, they were going to do a... Yes. And contrary to what comic book resources think, uh, She-Ra is He-Man's sister. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. This tweet, for some reason, made the rounds because, again, this goes back to this whole notion that all these toy shows, all these 80 shows were done by a bunch of, like, dude bro guys right, and it was, sitting and, around and, a table. And they were just to sell toys, which is not true. That's not true. But the people that worked on these shows, and we know some of them, cared a great deal about the show. Even though they were given basically a toy property to work with, these people really put everything they had into these shows. Well, back then, you know, a lot of the cool cartoons, the ones everybody wants to emulate now and repurpose now, were out there because of a, a, a movie that already existed or a toy line. And that's just the way it was for a lot of things. And like I said before, even up to the day, that still rings true because the people funding it had to make their money back, not only on the show, but on the toys. So yeah, that's how it happened. Um, they were based on toys, but that wasn't, it wasn't just to sell toys. It might have started out that way, but they went and found a legitimate companies to make the films and the shows so that, you know, they put the care into it. They made sure it got actual uh, actual story out of it. Yeah, Filmation was, you know, Filmation and Marvel Productions. Uh, we talked about that Filmation. Again, Erica Scheimer had a heavy hand in developing uh, She-Ra. And uh, we had, uh, you know, Gwen... Uh, Wetzler, who was, uh, I think, the showrunner producer for the first season of He-Man. So most toxic masculine show out there had a female uh, yeah. showrunner. And, you know, when they go on about how women, you know, because look how stylized she is. Well, have you looked at He-Man? She was a lot more realistic than He-Man is. Where's my where's my fat, balding, middle-aged Adam? Uh, don't even ask. Uh, where Please is he? Please do not. Beer belly Adam. Where is he? Realistic body types. Margaret Lesh, who they're, I think they're actually doing a whole movie Last time I, I, I remember the, the Toys That Made Us people mm-hmm. were doing a whole movie about Margaret Lesh because people do not realize this woman was involved in all of these, almost all of these shows that people were like, oh my God, those 80s toy commercial toxic masculine shows. Transformers, G.I. Joe, Power Rangers, X-Men. She was involved in yes. all of them. But no, that can't be true because we just now got female representation um, with shows like She-Ra. And here's the other thing, too. I'm so tired of hearing about the diversity behind She-Ra. Oh, you were right ahead of me. I was. It's an all-female writer's room. I am sorry, but that doesn't equal diversity. A, a room full of all women who are all probably like, you know, LGBTQ, whatever, because Noelle Stevenson is. It's an echo chamber. That is not diversity. That's an echo chamber. And I'm sorry. I agree. If a room is full of all men and they're all the same, that's an echo chamber as well. Right. Both of which are examples of lack of diversity. That is a lack of diversity. I don't care what you, what you, you who you sleep with. You're still all female. You're still all women. You still have are all basically a clone of each other. Uh, except for Chuck Austin, who might be the guy taking the picture. Right, you never see him, but he's actually, yeah, they brought him in to fix it. I mean, to help. Uh, so, you know, if you look at the original Shira, you had male and female writers. You had gay and straight writers. Right. You had everybody bringing different things to the table. And, um, you know, it, it, it is. Again, this is this lie that's being perpetuated by women in animation that the only, the only diversity is is women women but the thing is is women that's what we're trying to get across like i'm not saying there shouldn't be more women oh i 100 percent agree there should be more women in animation but to say that there weren't women in animation and to to have this narrative go around that um she was get basically the story is shira was made by a bunch of men who just wanted to fap to her and it was problematic so we w- brought women in to fix it there was nothing to fix. It was already created. Shira was already created. Everything in Filmation was created by a very diverse And my group of question is, if it was such shit and it was so terrible and everybody hated it, why the hell would they even bank on it now? Because honestly, this whole show feels like Noelle Stevenson had her own show, which would have been fine if it was yeah, her own show. Fine. And it was something new. And they wouldn't let her do it. So they put this, well, we have Shira, so slap it into Shira. It's how it comes across. It does not feel like Shira. It feels like it something completely different, which is completely fine if it had been advertised. I Different just just let her tell her own story. Stop trying to shove it into she which is what we've said since, the day, since day one. Just if she had done her own thing and it was something original, it would have been fine. It was the fact that they tried to, they, they, what do we have that's worth money? Oh, she And here's the thing. The reason she is still worth money is because last 35 years, the old fans, you know, yes. the ones that you insult at every chance you get, were the ones who kept it alive for 35 years. 35 years. Uh, yeah, and that's it. And I think it does come down to corporate thinking now. The reason we keep getting reboots is these shows are expensive mm-hmm. and they want to bank on something. Well, that's great. You bank on something, but you you don't take what made it work 
and change it all. And you sure as hell don't hire. I don't know. And this is the biggest problem I have with the show. The PR? Yes. I don't know who the fuck they hired for their PR, but they need to be terminated with extreme prejudice and driven out of Hollywood is the one of the worst marketing efforts I've ever seen. Instead, right. of, instead of being like, hey, everybody, we got new sheer. Come on board. Give it a chance. We want everybody immediately attack the fans. Right. If you, you, you would have done so much better to been like, I'm sorry you don't like the character designs, but you know what? There's just the designs. Wait till the show starts and maybe you'll like it. Even though I did watch the show and I didn't like it. Um, but they, you know, because I mean, I just thought, you know, for all the shade they throw at the stories of the original, there's no character development. I am sorry. I'll take the character development over the original over horsey, princess prom, pillow fight party. Uh, you know, they lost me completely when Glimmer's mom's missing and possibly dead. And they have a big party. And the whole first episode of season four is to plan her party for becoming the new queen. And I was like, what the hell? What all- the hell? <laughs> All of this is before the gay kiss at the end of season Which is, five. They just came at the end. And honestly, everybody keeps saying we're surprised by it. I don't know why they're surprised by no. it. I, everybody saw it coming since the very beginning of the of the show. So it got so bad. Attacking the fandom got so bad that uh, Melanie Britt, the voice of the original She-Ra, a, a regular on the convention circuit. Very popular with a lot of people. Very popular with He-Man She-Ra fans, 80s cartoon fans, a class act. She had to step in and be like, could you please stop attacking and I think my she, fans? And then she got so much crap for it. I think she had to private her stuff. I think she privated it. it. Yeah. But she said that uh, and we're going to reread it because a lot of people keep people. I swear to God, they have such a short memory. Like I said, this th- that documentary is out there. It's not about having a short memory. They literally have a list of talking points that they're allowed to, to reiterate. And instead of actually looking up information, they just like, well, so-and-so said on Twitter or so-and-so said on Tumblr. Well, it doesn't make it true. I can say, you know, the, the moon's green. Is it true? No. But if enough people say it's true, they think it's true. So here is Melanie Britt, the voice of Shira, who, as I understand, I, I could be wrong, but somebody told me that she actually wanted a role on the show and they would not let her read. And this mm-hmm. is before any of the drama. And usually usually when you have a show that you're rebooting or that you're bringing back, you usually let some of the old people come on to the show as a, as a cameo part or whatever, out of respect. But respect hasn't been a word I would use with the show towards the fans, towards the original creators, towards the narr- everything about it. There has been very little respect shown, and they but they demand respect. You don't get respect unless you give respect, and you have given v- very little of any. I mean, even when the one person died, you didn't even mention it until you could use it in your marketing plan. But we'll We're get that there. in a minute. We're getting there. So this is Melody Britt, the voice of the original She-Ra, beloved voice actress. Uh, a lot of He-Man fans, a lot of She-Ra fans love her. And she's a class act from everything I've heard. Okay, I, Do I read it or you can read it? Well, do you want to read it or you want to You can read it. I don't do a very good Melody Britt. Well, I don't either. Okay. That's why she's Melody Britt and I'm not. <laughs> I know I may be taking a chance posting and commenting on this sad she's afraid mm-hmm. to even post it. Uh, but my heart has been hurting about the comments some marketing yeah, people. Yeah, it's a marketing department. And publicity machines are bombarding the internet with regarding some fans of the original She-Ra. I'm actually glad that this is a published article they're talking about calling it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, someone has finally said enough to the kind of divisive marketing and negative publicity that has been promoted regarding the fact that some people might actually prefer the original series. You're not allowed to like the original series. No, that you're it, not allowed to. You have to like this, the new show or there's something wrong with you. If you don't like this new show, this is not Melanie Britt saying this, by the way. If you don't like this new show, you hate gay people. That's, yeah, that's how the, we that, boiled that's the, it down. That's the shield that they're using, yes. Never mind that Filmation was considered the gayest place in town back in the day uh but i digress uh it's a big world there's enough room for many cartoons but because the shira name is being used to do a new series i believe you must respect the admiration of fans of the original and not because you have the power of marketing or an ego trip put them into categories that denigrate their character and insinuate that if they prefer the original something is wrong with them and meeting thousands of fans, I've never come across any person who did not have a great heart and genuine love for the integrity and pure intention of the original series. It changed their lives for the better. It gave them comfort, laughter, and joy with a moral view that is exceptional. 33 years later, I love each and every one of you. Yeah, now, also another interview, which I don't think you probably have pulled up, they talked to her and some other people who were original creators, and they talked about um, how people have come up to them many times over the years and been like, you know, I had this bad thing happen or that bad thing happen, or I, I was afraid of how people would react to, to who I was and different things like that. And because of Shira, I had the courage to get through it. Geeky's trying not to cry. I'm trying not to cry because... 
I'm so sick of this shit. I'm just so sick of it. Every time I'm tired of watching fans who have kept the show around for 35 years and people like Melanie Britt, who has been nothing but a class act for 35 years, have to deal with constant attacks over a stupid cartoon show. And what kills me the most is the fact that their, their defense always is, well, it's for kids, it's not for you. But, but when you say the same thing back to them, why are you getting so mad about a cartoon show and they call you names? It's like, I've seen so many people that are not straight, are not white, are not male, get harassed because they don't agree with the new show, they don't like the new show. They don't have to like the new show, but you are not allowed to not like the new show or they make out there's something wrong with you. But people like me and the other fans have kept it around for 35 years. And when they found out there was going to be a new she show, they were thrilled. A lot of us were like, yay, new she was for me because I knew what was going to happen. It was exactly what I thought it would be. New she show, yay, we're so happy. And then as soon as the, car, the designs came out, we're like, well, that doesn't look like She-Ra. Wait, I don't understand. You're just a, I got told I was a bad mother. I got told I was a misogynist. I got told I was, you know, racist, sexist, homophobic, um, is phobes, because everything they can throw at you because heaven forbid, somebody don't, doesn't agree with their vision. And it's a load of crap. People shouldn't have to take this shit. Melanie Britt shouldn't have to go out there and have to hide her tweets and stuff because people are harassing her for being like, look, there's enough sheer for everybody. Yeah. You don't, I mean, they don't like it. That's okay. You don't have to be negative and call them names. And then all these people that are getting mad at our videos and coming out like, well, it means something to me because finally I felt like there's something that understood me. You know what? That's cool. I, I'm totally in support of you finding something that you, that you feel got you and helped you get through. That's not the issue here. The issue here is that feeling you have where you feel like you have to go out and defend a new show because it, it meant so much to you and you don't want to see people talking bad about it. That's why a lot of other fans have the exact same damn feeling and they've had it for 35 years. And then along comes this show and most people didn't have, didn't have much of a problem with things being changed a little bit. But we're, taking, we're talking, it's a clearly a completely different show with the she character slapped on it. It doesn't even show any respect to the original. And when they did try to do original throwbacks, it was kind of like in a mocking tone. Yeah, yeah we'll talk about that. And we'll it's like, you have shown no respect. And then you, however you feel about the, the, the new show is how all of us feel about the old show. And there could have been an, easily, an easy way to meet in the middle. There totally could have been. But the marketing and the people behind the show have just been nothing but as insulting as they can to, to original fans. The people in the comments, these concerted efforts for trolling and all this bullshit... The, the, you're, you're citing these examples of things that didn't even happen. You're not even right with your facts. And then you're out there calling people names. I mean, we have people, uh, you know, calling us out on Twitter. Sometimes they, they don't even use our names or like they don't want to talk about us. But they're like, look, the reason geeky. And again, this is like, this isn't, this isn't a man complaining about Shira. I, you know, don't have as much in this as geeky. Geeky grew up with this show. It this did. this is to her this is like you know a lot of people are so passionate about changes to star wars or star trek or doctor who this is that to her and to see the fandom be run down and to see all the lies around this show be perpetuated by the media it's disgusting yeah and i kept watching the hoping that you know i'd see something about it that i you know then i'd feel better about it and i do think catra and i said this many times was better in, in the new show i do feel the writing got better tighter i think after chuck probably came in board but it did yeah. seem to get tighter <laughs> on the, the second season which i also said and these people these people i love it you can't talk about it if you haven't seen all of it well then i i hope that they never ever speak of any show unless they've seen every episode of it ever yeah um and every version or they have no right to talk about it but they also don't watch my videos and they feel they have a right to to, to throw stuff out there that if they had watched the videos they would have said I mentioned and addressed in the videos, and they were wrong for they were wrong when they said it. But they don't watch it. But they want to tell me I have to watch everything about the show before I can comment. They they don't watch my videos before they comment. No, clearly not. Clearly not. They don't even do basic homework on. No, they on don't the even facts. fact check. And we're gonna talk about that. But first, you know, I want to go into um, again something else that had our backs up: the disrespect shown toward the people who worked on the original show. Beyond Melanie Brett feeling like she had to, at great peril to herself. Because she probably knows how these people are, mm -hmm. the cartoon fans are. Uh, she had to come out and say, just knock it the F off. Um, but much nicer than that. Uh, Larry Dottilio, who mm -hmm. was one of the creators, co-creators. One of She-Ra's actual fathers, not, you know, Noelle Stevenson saying her daughter. The actual creator of She-Ra. Um, he passed away, I believe, the same time WonderCon was happening, or about the same time it he was, passed away. It was during, I think. It was during, and they had a panel at WonderCon. And, and this was a bit after he passed away. Yeah, and 
they didn't say anything about him. We were waiting for them to at least mention it. No, because she came up on stage like, here I am, it's all about me. And which is totally Noel Stevenson. If you've watched, if you've been, if you know anything about what's her, what going around her for years, because I do. Um, and also she didn't, she didn't create Lumberjanes by herself, by the way. She was part of a team and she was brought in later. And she was like, other people have got the permission to do it. She was brought in to help. She didn't create Lumberjanes. So I'm calling, you know, do some homework. She didn't. Anyway, they get up there on stage and um, they never mention it. Not even, a, we're sorry, we're so sad, uh, we're happy, we're, we're, we're going to show you our next season, we're happy about it, but we want to take a moment to acknowledge Larry Dottilio, who, um, you know, created she that we're getting to now appropriate today. Um, nope, nothing. And they didn't bring him up at all until um, um, about a month after he died, and they only brought him up when they wanted to promote their damn new season. Yeah, that was disgusting. They, they said nothing about Larry Dottilio's passing until they used his death to promote the next season they of the use show. it as a promotion tool disgusting behavior you know, that just sums up the behavior behind the we show waited. the behavior is 90 percent what people are mad if you go back and watch our videos from back then we waited for weeks we're like okay they'll say something on twitter right they'll say something we about kept watching like you know because we're like please say something so we have at least some glimmer of hope that maybe you guys actually give a shit that you aren't garbage and you aren't gar and, yeah. and and that maybe there's some misunderstanding nothing we waited we waited we waited and i'm sorry but they, you you can't sit there and tell everybody they have to they have to give your show a fair try your run but to watch it you can't tell everybody they have to never say anything bad about it never complain about it never have anything you know that but nice to say about it when they themselves from the get-go have done the complete opposite of everything they're demanding that they get now you can't you can't shit on everyone and and step over everyone take credit for things you didn't do and blame people for things they didn't do over and over again and then expect everybody to kiss your ass and tell you you're wonderful when when it's over yeah i mean i know that it goes against the narrative uh but this man did have a hand in creating shira you would not have your jobs if it wasn't for larry dottilio the least you could do is is tweet God, I'm really sorry to hear about Larry's passing. Yeah, exactly. And they, they didn't. Nobody, they didn't. Not, none of the voice actors. I don't not, think Noel like, Stevenson no, did. Noel Stevenson should have at least done it, and yeah, she didn't do she's it. She's a show you, you have your job because of this guy. And Michael uh, Straczynski is yeah. the other one. And here's the thing, you know, it's... It, the fans kept this damn thing alive for 35 years and you and some of them have come to your new show and liked it and that's fine as i keep saying repeatedly you are allowed to like the show i don't care you're allowed but you're also allowed to not like something and neither one make you a bad person which is why i don't call people names for liking the show no not at all um but i keep getting called all kinds of names for not liking the show and then they're all blaming it because i don't like gay people and that has absolutely nothing to do with why i don't like the show i do think they really inserted a bunch of agendas here i do think it's a fan fic because noelle stevenson flat out said she made the show because it didn't it to have to represent herself which was what a fanfic is to make your own show exactly I, well i do feel bad i think that she if she had just done the show as something else yeah it would have been okay it's because they put she-ra on it and then they did they very very loosely based it on she-ra and it's not even that because you can see reboots like you know Battlestar galactica that are a loose reimagining they actually do really well but it's it's that but they were respectful to the original right it's that coupled with the outright disrespect shown for the fans and the people who worked behind the original and the lies that the, the marketing the lies people, are terrible the marketing people on the show are the worst i mean i've look i've we've seen some really shitty people at lucasfilm mm -hmm. you know but at least they they didn't pretend george lucas didn't exist right you know uh, they tried to destroy luke skywalker but they never pretended george lucas didn't exist or uh try to retcon the origin of star wars or anything because if someone who worked on the originals passes away like they just lost one of their um the marketing people whatever yeah. they, they they acknowledge it yeah they say you know oh we're sad to report that we lost so and so who was really integral to this you know whatever movie yeah uh was part of star wars they always acknowledge it they didn't even acknowledge it he literally died enough time that they would have known Charlie about the it convention and they I mean, didn't like, even oh mention God. it and then okay fine maybe they said no which i find hard to believe but then waiting and until weeks. weeks after and weeks. only using it as a market they literally used it to market their new season like uh, a month after the fact guy i hope i hope dreamworks at least sent his family a, a shit ton of flowers because this show only exists because guys like uh larry and, worked and on fans it. that kept it alive the fans that kept it alive um but that was that was a problem um you know another problem i had right out of the gate was when they announced the show at, at new york comic-con uh marcus scribner like i get the guys young 
Okay, he's the current voice actor of Bo, but he was uh, throwing shade at the late George DeCenzo, who did the voice of Bo. I think he did Hordak, too. And he was talking about how robotic and garbage the voice actors were. Yeah, Again, no. you only have your, your damn job well, because these people came before you. I'm sorry, but I've listened to the voice actors in a new show, and honestly, they're not that much better. I mean, they're voice actors. They're not that much better at uh, voice acting. And I'm sorry, Best Friends Club, you know, is... is it wasn't any better. I'm sorry. It was very childish. It was no better. It was the original cringy. Hell yeah. Is the new one cringy? Hell yeah. It's like, look, there is a difference. You can see the difference. Look at the people, even the, the you know, that worked on the original show. You know, what, what am I, what I'm seeing is I'm seeing a bunch of adults who worked on the original She-Ra, men and women, mm -hmm. adults. And I'm looking at the current crew but they're, they're very young compared to the original. Now, I'm not trying to get all ages, but there's something to be said for experience. The people who worked on the original shows had decades of experience mm -hmm. and they knew how to handle themselves and they knew what the expectations were. But now we have a bunch of just young people kind of running at the mouth. I, another thing, this kind of ties in, but doesn't, another thing that we keep hearing, another one of those like bullshit, you know, narratives that go along with it was, well, the animation wasn't very good. Um, well, the first season of the She-Ra show, what, the animation wasn't very good either. I saw places where they didn't have it colored, didn't have it inked right, and different places like that. But the original, they had to run it every day. So yeah. they had to slap these things out quickly to get them out every day. It wasn't like, you got months and months and months to do eight episodes. And also the whole, well, they only got what, two seasons of She-Ra and this one got five. Yeah, but in those five seasons of She-Ra, quote unquote, seasons that are eight to what, 12 episodes? Netflix season. Netflix yeah. season. Uh, that's still about half of what the original She-Ra had in two seasons. Yeah, the, we're going to talk about that because there's an article. This is we're, we're saving the best for last. These these articles that are coming out retroactively defending mm -hmm. uh, the show and making it out to be a much bigger deal than it actually was. Um, you know, one of the articles in particular is like, oh, my God, you know, the original Shira was a failure. It was a bunch of men who did it and, and it they canceled true. it. They canceled it after two seasons. Yeah, at like 90 some episodes. Yeah, because back then a season was like 40 some 50 episodes uh, along. So let me tell you why Filmation, why Filmation did things the way they did. Now, uh, Lou Scheimer was from Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. They actually, they, when Tunesium was open, it closed down, unfortunately. But they had basically like a shrine to Lou Scheimer here. And Lou Scheimer was a good guy who wanted his people to work all year round. Mm -hmm. So he was like, yeah, we're doing 65 episode orders. Well, the only way you can realistically do that on a budget is to reuse a lot of the, right. the movement. And that's why people are like, well, Lou Scheimer and his daughter did a lot of the voices. Yeah, because it saves so much money that they can turn around and do other things that they needed the money for. And they can pay their employees and they can keep them on staff and all year. People are like, that's a self-insertion. No, it's not, because doing a voice a voice for a character is not the same as writing the character. Right, and I, I do think the Shimers wrote some episodes, uh, but uh, I know Lou did the voice of Orko. He, he did several voices, yeah. so did she. But yeah. they did it because it was a, mo a way to save money, because they didn't. They wanted to keep the show going, and they wanted to keep their people employed. Yeah. So when they could take some, some things to themselves to do to cut costs to make sure that people kept their jobs, uh, they would do that. Yeah, because back then they were working on the shoestring budget. I mean, Filmation had been around for a while, but, uh, you know, it was it was a risk when they did He-Man. They didn't know it was going to be a big hit because the toys were out, but they weren't they weren't a massive hit until the TV show dropped because um, I actually had He-Man before the show came out. But you know what? We're using footage. If it's such a problem, how come they do it with a new show when she has her transformation scenes? That is a damn good I question. I mean, you shouldn't reuse footage, but we reuse all the transformation scenes in the, the show. Yeah... So it's okay when they do it. Right. That's basically what this boils down to. The whole thing is it's okay when uh, when they do it. But again, you know, to go back to kind of how Marcus Scribner is throwing shade at George uh, DeCenzo, retroactively, this is what gets me. They, okay, so Larry DeTilio, they pay homage to him to promote season two or three mm -hmm. or whatever it was. Um, they name one of Bo's two dads in the original show, George, after George DeCenzo. Retroactively, act like they, they give a shit. And they might not have. His name might have been George already. And then they just said, oh, it's because of him, honest. But they they did this, again, after after Marcus Scribner made his shitty comments. And a lot of people got mad about it. And they also put a little nod in season two to the original Shira, they, but they did it as kind of a brain fart of Bo. Yeah, was, it was kind of like, it, it, it was a little bit mocking. They were, like, they were I'm not slamming. That, kind yeah, of thing, they were know? slamming the original show. So they got these little, you know, little... Um, uh, homage is in there, but that's after the backlash from the initial mm -hmm. launch, which was catastrophic, and they did everything they could do to throw shade at the old show. Kind of like Thundercats Roar. 
you know, starting right out of the gate with giving the finger to uh, fans of the original show. Yeah, and, and this has gone back to the team behind it. Both mostly, I would blame PR mostly. Yeah, but then when you have voice actors throwing shade too, and then you have the, you know they're they're encouraging the fandom to be toxic. You know, well there you go. Yeah, so we're gonna move on to we're gonna move on to uh, all of these articles that popped up in the last couple of days, uh, defending defending New Shira throwing shade at the original show or trying to retroactively say the original show was something it wasn't. It wasn't. Mm-hmm. And uh, this this one they're trying to this is so funny because comic book resources gets it wrong so many times. Yeah. So you can't take anything they say seriously. And they're supposed to be they're supposed to be the, the journalists, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so this was uh, from Comic Book Resources, Fabulous Secret Powers, Masters of the Universe, LGBTQ fandom, which, which I, has been around since the beginning. So wait a second, wait a second. Which is it? Which is it? Because we keep hearing Shira was for straight people to fap to. Mm-hmm. Straight men. Straight men to fap to. But now we're talking about all the gay fans that He-Man and She-Ra have or have had for years. Right. So which is it? It's a really good question because it seems like they don't know. It's whatever is going to get hits that day. But you go through this article and they're talking about how, uh, you know, the original He-Man and She-Ra were, were gay positive. There were a lot of gay people that worked at Filmation. Mm-hmm. Oh, Bo was gay. Everybody knew Bo was gay. Everybody knew Bo was gay. They just didn't explicitly state it. He-Man never had a romantic interest. In fact, uh, I think it was Frosta. They kept trying to, to get uh, He-Man, and he's like, I don't know. I'm not interested in it. But now Frosta's just stereotyped into an Eskimo. Now she's so. an Eskimo. Now it's okay, because ste- now they stereotyped her, so it's okay now. So, cold, yeah. So, I mean, here they're kind of going. It's like, Adam is a muscle-bound pretty boy who gains his word fabulous powers by grasping a hold of a phallic sword. Okay, whatever. Oh, oh come on. Let's be honest here. Uh, I mean, Everybody made the jokes he about wears He-Man being pink and purple. I mean, I mean I'm come not... on. That's not, a new, that's not a new idea. But uh, there's some in here that are just, just batshit crazy. The queer coding would carry on to Shira, the 85 spin-off starring Prince Adam's cousin, Adora. His cousin, Adora. The, the intro to the show, she literally says she's, a, you know, Adam, she's He-Man's sister. Like, have you ever... And there Twin were, sister to He-Man. There were, other, there were other articles talking about how uh, Shiro was in the Secret of the Sword movie, and now she has her own show. Oh, this one does it, too. Oh, it uh, does. They talk about it down, down the, at the end. They No, but it was, maybe it wasn't this one. It was a different one. I think it was a different one. They, they've done that many times, where they said that, if, that, that new, the new series is based on the movie. Uh, no, it was not just a movie. Um, thank you. But I, I love this. They're like, they're like, uh, cause like we're the authorities. If you watched even one fucking episode of Shira, she literally says she's He-Man's sister in the, oh, the very mm-hmm. first thing she says. Right. Just putting that out there. Anyway. Um, but then they're like really reaching, like we've got people saying Skeletor is an AIDS victim. What the hell are you talking about? You want to know where Skeletor came from? He-Man was originally supposed to be like a uh, knockoff of Conan. Mm-hmm. Skeletor came from one of Conan's villains, Thalsa Doom, a skeleton-headed wizard. Right. Jeez, oh man, imagine that. There he is again. This is where Skeletor came from. How anybody could get that Skeletor was an AIDS victim. I don't know. I, it just blows my mind. I, I'm just like, when you got to realize Skeletor was around before AIDS really hit big mm-hmm. because He-Man was actually introduced in, I think, 80 or 81. Um, and it wasn't really part of the discussion, it, but it never came up. If you actually look at the people who designed He-Man, they will tell you he was basically a knockoff Conan the Barbarian. Right. He-Man was Conan. Skeletor was Thulsa Doom. Actually, if you want to talk about it, um, He-Man was more, I think, about the toys first story later yes. than She-Ra was. She-Ra was she- designed with the story in mind. Yes, yeah. exactly. she the argument for She-Ra, it doesn't even isn't even completely accurate because with He-Man, you could argue that, because they were basing it on Conan. Yeah. But She-Ra was was deliberately created uh with a story in mind when they did the toys. It wasn't like they had the comics out and then they had to change it for the show like they did here. Right, right. Um, so yeah, so there's that. We're seeing all kinds of articles like this. They're just trying to cash in on on well, search a couple things. The one person in the comments was like, ah, the, you, the, "I saw the show, and the new show is so much better because the new show has a lot more character development, and it doesn't. And and, and the new show has more has morals, or has a moral, has a morals like morals of the story. I'm like, you didn't watch the old show, and I know this because if you'd watched the old show, you would know." that in the episodes of the old show at the end, they would have a, a lesson or a moral they'd present and that's what the whole episode was based on. 
Yeah, that they had to. They had to. That was part of the deal. Like all, a lot of the shows back mm-hmm. then, they all did. Yeah, because it was how they. Well, they, originally it started. This is how they skirted a lot of the advertising, you know, issues. But um, filmation was very cognizant. They knew this show was going to reach a lot of people. There's a reason why He Man doesn't, you know, chop people's heads off mm-hmm. and stab them. In fact, he uses a sword just to deflect laser bolts and stuff like well, that. Well, Sheer wasn't allowed to use her sword to fight. Oh yeah, I remember. Sheer yeah. wasn't allowed to even use her sword to fight, so she had to kick ass and get it across that she was a strong female character without the use of her sword. Which is why it changed shape. Yeah, the it, sword was, it, became, shape. it became more of because they, she wasn't allowed to use a sword because they didn't think women should be allowed to use a sword, which was, was actually a, a whole panel of people for television, which was made up of male, male and female people, by the way. But she wasn't allowed to use her sword, so she actually, it was even more powerful for her because she kicked ass without it. Um, you know, and she could actually lift it. God, no, it's just an improvement over the over the new one. Um, but the, the, the commenters, I didn't read all that. Yeah, I'm an adorer twins, not cousins. Wait, do you expect a CBR opinion where it actually knows something about the show they're writing about? Uh, this. Yes, we've mentioned this many times. Erica Scheimer, daughter of Filmation founder Lou Scheimer, who voiced characters for He-Man Shira cartoons, is a lesbian. She said, I, I was a strong female voice myself, and guess what? I happen to be gay. Does that make any difference about anything? No. I'll tell you one thing. It didn't matter because Filmation was one of the gayest places in town. Yeah, they were very accepting of everyone. It was already diverse. You didn't diversify anything. I mean, we know people who worked at Filmation. They're, yeah, they've been, God, they've been gay fans of He-Man and she for decades. Where the hell have you people when been? They say, when they say they diversify it, the only thing they're meaning is we made character, we made the characters on screen uh, LGBTQ because we felt like we should make them like us. That's what she said. She flat out said this. Well, this is another example of, and we see this all the time. Where we take fan it, fiction. Yeah, we take an existing IP. We don't know anything about it. And then we take it and we make it into something we can write about. We, we start from scratch because we don't want to do... Uh, any kind of research or due diligence, you know, and they're they're calling out the AIDS thing too. I didn't even catch that. That's disgusting that they would even make that comparison. But um, they said that they were trying to leave comments and they were uh, getting flagged and removed. Mm-hmm. But there was a there was another CBR article. I don't have it pulled up in front of me, but they, they I've seen this many times in the CBR articles where they were like, you know, and the Princesses of Power is based on the 1985 Shira Princess of Power movie. But one, it wasn't called Shira Princess of Power. Uh, the movie wasn't. It was Secret of the Sword. Yeah, and it was the miniseries for the series. It was, right. Shira was always planned as a series. They took the first uh, five episodes, they they made some cuts, and they smushed it together into a movie and released it theatrically. But I love, I love well, well, the new one had five seasons. Well, if you put all the episodes together, you've got about half as many as the original had in two. Yeah, yeah. So we're, uh, th- there are a lot. Now, CNN's actually picking up on the wise, oh, too, yeah. though. So CNN, this is, well, no, CNN has a guest article. It's opinion, marked opinion. And they changed the title. Yeah, the title. Now, this is uh, thanks to Lee for tagging us in. But the original title was Why She-Ra and the Princesses of Power is the Best Show on Television. Mm -hmm. Not long after we got tagged in on that, CNN changed the headline because they probably got all kinds of crap Mm -hmm. to She-Ra and the Princesses of Power is the rarest of television. How is it the rarest? Because they've already they've already done everything on on, uh, Steven Universe and done it better. Yeah, Steven Universe was a completely original thing. Uh, it was, I could argue, way gayer than they mm-hmm. had a gay wedding and gay kisses and they're having gem sex. You know, that's how they, I, they that's fuse. That's how they fuse, you know? I mean, come on. Um, so you're kind of an also ran here. But this is weird. This is an opinion piece. They, they put big disclaimer, but you look at what she writes. So uh, here we go. Lindsay is an assistant professor of theater at Linfield College. She's the co-editor with Sarah Brady of Vying for the Iron Throne, essays on power, gender, death, and performance in HBO's Game of Thrones. And the author of War is Performance, Conflict in Iraq. Um, The views expressed here are hers. Wait, she's an assistant professor of theater. So we have... I have a degree. I have have a couple. I have a degree and almost a second degree. Do Do I get to write opinion pieces for CNN? Uh, yeah, so, but they had to change the title. So basically we have uh, Gender Studies Karen writing an article on why why this is the best or was the best show ever it until was, they changed the title. was, which is why I think everybody's butt hurt because it's over. Right, so the show is for Gender Studies Karen and Tumblr, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she does write about it. So talking about how they, they watch the uh, watch the finale and, and, and she's still on an emotional high because, you know, uh, gender studies professor. Hardly ever, ever does a popular television show, we don't know how popular it is, manage to utterly satisfy its fan base with its finale. But the conclusion, the climax... They never give them the ships they want, but they did. Right. But the conclusion of this epic and epically queer fancy has left many twirling 
with happiness. Well, I'm glad they're happy. Uh, you know, and then they keep saying, "I don't." I, my whole problem with it is even that. Um, so this is this is the thing that they're talking about. You know, basically all the diversity and the talking points, but they have to make sure that they throw shade at the original. Mm -hmm. The first iteration of Shira created by those stinky men, Larry Dottilio and J. Michael Straczynski, not completely true, there were women involved too, was canceled after only two seasons and seemed primarily a vehicle to sell toys. Which I've already addressed. And again, we've already just talked about this. Oh, after two seasons. They keep acting like that means something. They, they keep acting like two seasons uh, is somehow like an insult. In those two seasons, they had pretty much twice as many episodes the five seasons of the new show had. So the, they keep using this as a talking point. We had five. Well, eight show episodes isn't a, really a season by most people's standards. And they were selling toys. Actually, she you could maybe argue that more for He-Man. she they wanted to sell toys, but they actually wanted a, a good show to go with it. It was based on the idea of having a show first. That's why they had the people create, creating it that they did. Um, they put a lot of effort into creating she because they wanted a spinoff from He-Man because they thought that they could have something that would appeal to girls even though a lot of girls watch he-man already so right there you're full of crap anyway anyway but this this tells you basically like the show was designed to hit certain points with certain people this, 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 her trying to refute our point just backs up her point right so show her yeah um stevenson takes on the cult classic foreground uh, storytelling it rethinks gender sexuality and power and building on the groundbreaking work of steven universe trying to be you know kind of, you know also what do you call them also ran also ran uh represents queerness as a multifaceted human experience what about plot as, yes. as a parent of two young children, I'm dogged with fears and hopes about what our world is teaching them through the media they consume. Like many parents, I'm particularly invested in programs that showcase gender parity and racial diversity. You know what? I got called a bad mom because uh, of She-Ra. Meanwhile, our kids watch Steven Universe all the time and never said anything. They watch all kinds of shows that are very diverse and we don't care. They've been, our daughter watches anime. Anime is pretty queer. There's a lot of gay mm. people. There always has been. Yeah, and, and plus been. both of our kids have friends that are LGBTQ. Yeah, so both and both of our kids, well, our daughter especially, has a lot of friends who are have, are different than her uh, racially as well. Uh, you know, us not liking Shira has absolutely no bearing on them not like you know understanding diversity. No, but that's the only defense they can come up with. Uh, as a queer parent who seeks out children's programming and that features characters or families who look like us, I've been plagued with frustration and so wait, disappointment. So she herself is queer. That's why it's the best show on television yes. because she says so. Yes. Because it relates to her. And I get that. I get you want. I, I get that you want things that you you. Know, this is like me. I get that. I get that. I do. I do. But you know, there's other shows that are original that didn't redo you know everything and ruin it and didn't shit on fans uh, to do so. Yeah. Basically, the whole the whole article is about how. It's a great show because... Because she's queer and she wants her kids to see it. Yes. Which, look, I'm not saying that that's not a valid reason at all. But what I'm saying is, you know, there are some problems uh, with the show. There's some problems with the uh, narrative about the show, about the history of Shira. Mostly that, the problem's been with the behavior. The behavior and uh, all of this stuff that's been promoted. Now, they don't have to worry about this being a toy commercial because Mattel really didn't sell very many Shira toys no. at all. And I think they kind of had to make them sell them to begin with. Yeah, it seemed like they were kind of at gunpoint, like they had to make it the It was dolls. like an afterthought, like, oh, shit them out. We'll just use the body types we already have and shit them out. Now, what's curious is um, Shira's over. There are two He-Man shows coming to mm -hmm. Netflix and a classic He-Man line is coming out this fall. And there's a classic She-Ra doll coming out with brushable hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. It's got kind of brushable hair. So I, I'm going to tell you what I, I personally think happened. And again, this isn't, you know, I, I just what I think happened is the previous CEO of Mattel made a deal with DreamWorks, let DreamWorks do whatever they wanted to do with the franchise and now they're taking the reins back because it didn't go the way they thought it would and they didn't sell toys well, and tell some bad shit and no matter what the show was a lot of it could have been avoided had the behavior not been so shitty yeah but mostly what we're at we're, we're up against we're, we're so mad about is the behavior and the way fans were treated yeah i think people would have been willing to give the show another chance or, or watch on its own term if it didn't have that and again this is kind of the same with with star wars and with star trek and doctor who where you see the marketing you see the media machine behind it and it taints the whole thing to the point where you're like i don't even want to watch it i we still haven't watched rise of skywalker nope. because of all the the bullshit around the movie you know we can't tell you if it's a good movie or a decent movie or not because we are so burnt out about the on the drama around it that we didn't even watch it because again it's all the same thing it's all the same it's 
it um, if you don't like it there's something problematically wrong with you and you're a bad person and then they keep using uh gender uh race whatever as shields that it's it's, it's completely critic proof because gay people it's gonna be critic proof because you know you're just phobic it's probably critic proof because you don't like strong female characters. Well, I gotta tell you, I know for a fact that a lot of people who don't like these things aren't white, straight, or male. And you know, what about yeah. those people? It doesn't matter. And they admit, they make up the majority of people who don't like it. So, you know, this whole uh, idea of hate on people first and then say you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to not like it, but they're allowed to have whatever opinion they have about whatever you love. They're allowed to have whatever opinion they have about you, whether they know you or not. They're allowed to have whatever opinion they have about what they like and that's important to them. And they're allowed to defend it if it's important to them, but you're allowed to say nothing because they said so. Um, yeah, and it's the Masters of the Universe here has always had gay fans uh, for years, for decades. Uh, you didn't invent anything new. They always had, you know, people that were diverse behind the scenes right. for decades. You didn't do anything new. Nope. Um, so there we go. So quit lying about it. Uh, hopefully, I, I guess, you know. They're not going to. They're just going to keep putting the same lies because that, that's hard. I mean, I have to actually, you know, make sure I know what I'm talking about. Uh. Well, you know what's going to happen, right? As soon as the new He-Man show comes out, this whole thing is going to be reignited again. Oh, 100%. And what's really funny is after the Shiver shows, there's this whole blitz on the media. And I looked and like CBR, they do like 30 articles in like a matter of like, you know, a week. And then they had a gap from like last October until March of this year where they didn't cover Shiver at all. Yeah, well, it's time to ramp it up again because it's over. The PR uh, PR outlets are firing up. People uh, are like, well, I heard we're getting DVDs soon. I'm like, and? So buy them. Everybody gets okay, DVDs. Yeah. Everything's on DVD. And, and, Who cares? What's that? And? You know? So, hooray for you? Good. You won. You won. I, I, what did they win? I don't even know I what they know. won. Because that was already won. The battle was won. I know. Uh, years ago. We years ago. the battle to say we won it again. And that is that is the problem with uh, all this stuff. Modern day creators. That's the problem with a lot of the comic publishers now. Is everybody wants to reinvent the wheel to say that they're the ones that invented the wheel? But why don't you just make a new wheel? Because yeah. maybe if you made a new wheel, then people would be like, oh, that's cool. Because, I mean, I, you know, I might have been more interested in the show if it was something new and not uh, rehashing something that, you know, had name recognition. Because, quite frankly, no one would watch a show. They felt no one would watch a show unless they had a name, a highly recognizable name associated with it. And then they shit all over it. Yep. Yep. So, all right. We're going to wrap this one up. Yep. Okay. So, please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants here on Clownfish TV. We'll talk yep. later. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.